Okay, in this tutorial we're going to continue on discussing the vertical curves. Uh, we're going to just start from where we left off on the, uh, the vertical curve basic tutorial. And I'm going to just get into a little bit more advanced topics. This, this tutorial might not be for everybody, but for the advanced conveyor engineers that want a little bit more uh, control over their curve calculations. Uh, by default, Sidewinder is, um, is conservative, which is good. Uh, and essentially there's two areas we're going to talk about. One is actually on how it calculates the belt tension and what it's actually using uh, for that requirement. Uh, the other is the fact that uh, by default Sidewinder uses uh, the worn belt uh, weight for all the calculations. Now what do I mean by that? It simply means that if we look at the fully loaded belt, for our fully loaded load case here for example, we can see our belt mass is 28.6. However, when Sidewinder does the vertical curve calculations, again for the same fully loaded case, we can see for this first convex curve, it's actually selected a, a required radius of uh, 333 based off of the worn belt condition. So Sidewinder, regardless of what case it happens to be, empty, full, inclines, declines, whatever the case is, it's going to use the worn belt mass. Um, which is obviously a bit more conservative. Now if you don't want to do that, if you want to simply use whatever mass, you know, whatever the mass is for that specific case, you certainly can. If we go to our project information tab here and we look, we see we've got use worn belt mass for liftoff calculations. Again, if I put my mouse over there, you can see there's a little tool tip. You can go ahead and read that on your old time that explains this. But by default, that's yes, meaning that Regardless of the case, we're going to use the low belt mass for the liftoff calculation, i.e. slightly more conservative. Now if I switch this to no, now it'll simply use, for the nominal friction case, it'll use the nominal friction ma uh, belt mass. So if I come back here and we look at our fully loaded normal, we can see again that was 333. When I run the calculations, hey, now it's actually only 282. So for our fully loaded normal friction, we really only needed 282 instead of the 333. This is up to you as, as the design engineer. If you don't think your belt mass is ever going to wear, um, that's, that's fine. You can go ahead and, and use that case. Uh, by general, I personally think you should always design to a uh, reduced belt mass uh, condition. Now you might come back and say, all right, but if I've actually got a worn belt mass, then my tensions are actually slightly lower than they are um, for the uh, the nominal belt mass case. And you're right. Um, Sidewinder can go ahead, ex and this is particularly true if we've got, say, a high friction case. Remember, our high friction case is going to be our lowest temperature, and we also actually add uh, belt top and bottom cover mass to that condition. So it is somewhat justified to say, hey look, for my high friction belt mass, um, this high friction case, I shouldn't be using a low friction or my reduced belt mass because I'm going to be using my high friction belt tensions. Well, because of that, we've actually got this extra column here called high friction reduced belt mass. So in this case, if you're going to use this tab here, this will do the calculations using all the high friction, but for the belt covers, it's going to use the worn friction. So in other words, this would be your wintertime conveyor condition, uh, say five years into operation or 10 years into operation when your covers are worn. So that's essentially all this can case uh, or condition is for, is being fine tuning your belt lift off calculations a little bit more. So if we're gonna use this case, we could very well say, yep, nope, use the belt mass for that condition specific case and let's just go ahead and look at that. Well fully loaded normal we're at 282, the fully loaded high we're at 274 and that fully loaded reduced mass hey, we're at 332 which is actually turns out to be really close to our original design of, of the 333 was. Um, but again this is up to you as an engineer, and you know, the more detailed you want to get, uh, you certainly can look at that and, and say, yeah, let's, let's really fine-tune this thing. Uh, the only other uh, sort of advanced issue would be when we do the calculations, for example, the fully loaded uh, normal friction case, let's look at again, 
what we assume is that the belt tensions are what they are for this case, but this local uh, section is empty. So in other words, the conveyor is loading and it's fully loaded and it stops loading for 5 seconds or 20 seconds or whatever the case may be and starts loading again. Well, that empty section of belt comes through and it travels through and it's going to travel through this first convex curve and then through each of these concave curves. And when that empty section travels through, we still don't want the belt to lift off. So that's what Sidewinder does by default. It assumes these tensions or uh, the incline tension, whatever the tension case may be, but it does the calculations uh, for liftoff, assuming that that section's empty. Now, if we really wanted to split hairs, we could say, hey, but my tensions, if, if I unload this section of belt, my tensions are actually going to be a little bit less than they would be. And, and you're right. And if you really, you know, really wanted to get split in here, as you could say, all right, let's go ahead and make a custom case. Um, let's go ahead and make custom one, and I'm going to call this uh, uh, incline, or sorry, uh, first curve unloaded. Oh, I'm just going to show you why we do that. And let's say normal friction. If I go over to my geometry here, my conveyor profile, I could say, all right, in this case, let's make a condition um, that's fully loaded, but let's unload this very first curve. Likewise, I could make another custom condition and only unload this second curve. Now you can see on this conveyor, by unloading this little section, we will have a slightly reduced tensions. Uh, but the reality is, is it's not going to make much of a difference. But you might have a conveyor that, that hey, maybe maybe uh, uh, this curve is is uh, significant, or the curve is in a, a significant lift part of the conveyor that will change the the, the calculations uh, significantly. Or you're really trying to get that that radius down as much as you want. You might want to look at that specific load condition. Um, in this case, we can look here vertical curves for a fully loaded. Uh, the requirement there is 282, and if I go to that one custom case, well, there, now it's 283, and 206 versus, well, 206. So it didn't even change our required running, but changed it by one meter for uh, our starting condition, simply because our chain tensions were slightly reduced. So those are really the, the two items I, I wanted to point out in the advance. The other thing is, is that uh, in addition to this very simple uh, output table that just sort of summarizes all the cases, or again, you can look at each individual one, you can actually go up to the detailed output, click on vertical curves, and again, you have the all case or each individual load case, but this gives a full summary of each cases, each of the conditions. So for example, for fully loaded, I can look at the running, my minimum tension, my maximum tension. Uh, what my current safety factor is for that condition, what the allowable safety factor is. Now remember, since this is a convex curve or a concave curve, we've got our steady state, our nominal safety factor that we allow for a steel cord is 6.67. However, the edge or our local edge or center, our local safety factor is 10% higher than that. So 6.67 divided by 1.1 gives us our 6.07. And for dynamic conditions, starting and stopping, we allow another 15% on top of that. So again, if I go back here, I can see right there 6.06, .06, and we actually are allowing an edge stresses to get down to 5.51 for starting and stopping. Um, the required radius for each of each case, operational stop, e stop, starting, is also shown. Likewise, um, our minimum tensions. We don't talk about this much, but again, with a convex curve, you don't want to buckle that, that center uh, of the belt. You don't want to go into compression. And if you've got a, uh, or in a convex curve, in a concave curve, uh, you, there's a con allowed uh, controlled edge buckling, if you will, um, that's allowed. But those calculations are shown right there. Um, and here we go. We've also got the required liftoff for the worn belt and for the nominal belt mass. Now we can see in this case required for nominal and actually worn is the same because we've selected no here. So it's only done the calculations for the actual belt mass. If I had selected yes there, we can go back and now look at this fully loaded. 
I can see there's my same 206 that we had for the nominal, but for the fully loaded worn condition, I need 240, 242. Again, this is for running. For operational stop, e-stop, and start, they're also shown. Remember our 333 we had? There, well, there it is. Came from that. For our e-stop, we actually needed 306. Um, so these are some some just more details on each of the conveyor. Uh, we also show then there again if the belt was fully loaded and that lo local curve section wasn't empty, but it was say 15% loaded, um, we'd have we'd only require a radius of 121 and uh, uh, the required uh, radius lift off 100% would be uh, uh, 36 meters. So those are just uh, some additional details uh, uh, that you can look at. And, and this is, is very powerful because you can look at the all case and kind of track down and see exactly which case is controlling it and how the other cases can, uh, uh, are, are affecting the design. So I think that's it for uh, the vertical curve calculations, and we'll continue on.